And now, with a preview of tonight's game and a look at what's happening at the ballpark, it's time for the Ameren, Illinois, and ActonEnergy.com pregame show. Let's send it down to the field and check in with the voice of the Chiefs, Nathan Beliva. Thank you, Brett. Welcome to Chiefs Countdown presented by Ameren, Illinois. And we've got our usual PeoriaMagazines.com interview on the pregame show. And today, I'm with Rob Kaminsky, who is our Pekin Insurance. It's beyond the expected player of the game last night, a nice win. Let's start right there. Congratulations on the win and the team win. And uh, I know a nice big win to start the second half home part of the schedule for you guys. Yeah, it was a big win coming out from the second half. And uh, it was my first start. And the defense picked me up big time. And the offense is really coming around. So it's becoming fun to watch and even better to pitch in. You had a uh, little bit of a, I guess, pushback because you were supposed to start Sunday in Quad Cities. You were getting ready there. All of a sudden it rained out. Uh, Monday was obviously an off day, so you go to Tuesday instead. What was it like in that, I guess, 48-hour span uh, where you were supposed to pitch in Quad Cities so you were prepared to go from, I'm sure, when you woke up Sunday morning or even started preparing on Saturday, sitting in the stands and, and watching Blake McKnight pitch. So what is that like when you get pushed back that way? I was pretty hectic at first, but then everything settles down, and uh, the day off really helped me because I could throw a side on that Sunday, day off Monday, pitch Tuesday. So it didn't affect much, but it's just a different team, really. And uh, I pitched against them next time, so I have a little scouting report, so it all worked out. So was that kind of, I guess, more of the mental part, was you prepared for Quad Cities, you sat in the stands and charted for a couple days, so you're ready to go with them, and now all of a sudden it's uh, nine different batters. At this level, does that matter as much as it might? you know, uh, further up the ladder? Yeah, definitely chart, and we uh, take a few notes on other hitters or whatnot, but, uh, you know, it's a different day, a different team, so you just erase the other team for a little bit and uh, focus on the next task at hand. Same thing I asked Blake yesterday when I talked to him up here. The two catchers you guys get to work with, Carson Kelly and, and Steve Bean, been calling fantastic games, controlling the running game, doing a lot there. You and Carson, uh, with maybe a couple of exceptions in the, in the first inning with a wild pitch, looked like you were pretty much on the same page yesterday. Tell me a little bit about that relationship and, and how it's built over the last couple months. Yeah, I mean, I've thrown to both, and they're both uh, <clears throat> great catchers. You know, I've come from high school. I haven't thrown to many guys. It was right. one guy for my last – sophomore, junior, senior year, so he was good as well. And um, they're different kinds of catchers, but I pulled Carson aside in, like, the fourth, and I was like, I've never been on the same page like this with anyone. I mean, we weren't shaking off much. We were in the zone and thinking the same thing. So kudos to him on calling an awesome game. And you're both 19 years old, which is, uh, I guess, for maybe just weird for me, I guess, my, my part of it being in my 30s. So <laughs> that's fun to see a, a couple of teenagers and in, uh, in, the, in the way you guys work together. Obviously, it's a very young team. You guys have come together pulling guys from here and there, different teams from last year. But how does the kind of camaraderie of the, uh, the team come together this part of the season? It's awesome. I've been here since the uh, beginning of May, and all the older guys are great. They pull me aside and help me out with – and off the field stuff, you name it, you could talk to any of them. And the coaches have been great, so uh, it's just fun to play here. You get to go around Peoria, do some stuff too. I know it uh, might be a little bit out of your uh, your comfort zone, but got to go out with Carson and, and Rocky Vanakin a couple Fridays ago and uh, and yeah. talk to a, a group here in downtown Peoria. And what was that like for you? And, and just kind of getting to go around Peoria and and meet some of the fans. That was awesome. I'm not a big talker, but uh, anyone that supports the Chiefs is uh, cool with me. So. It was fun talking to them. It was easy. It was just a normal conversation, and uh, Carson did most of the talking. I, I kind of I figured that was the way you were going to go with it. Uh, a chance to go home over the All-Star break last week for you. I know a lot of guys were able to, to get some fights, so nice little uh, good break to, to go see uh, the family and, and some friends. Yeah, it was great. I figured I'd save my uh, parents a flight out, but my dad actually surprised me last night and came to the game, so we got food after, and uh, it was great seeing him. And Yeah, going home for the All-Star break was great. Uh, seeing my family, seeing my buddies, seeing my dogs. I have my own dog, so I was happy to see her, and uh, it was awesome. You look back now on it uh, a year later from when you were drafted, and you see the new Cardinals draft class. They're all starting to sign their contracts now and go show up in Jupiter, uh, the GCL teams, Johnson City, uh, State College, wherever it might be. You look back on it a year, what would you tell those guys a year later that maybe you wish you would have known uh, when, you, when you signed last year instead of going to college and got going down there in the GCL? Um, Advice-wise, I'd just say be all ears. Just listen to everybody. and I mean, be competitive, but first, half, first not full season is more a learning experience than anything, just being away from home and just take everything in stride. You mentioned learning experience. You guys have got one of the great Cardinals uh, of all time here in the, uh, the dugout in the clubhouse for the next couple of days, and Willie McGee, who is a special assistant to the GM. And 
Sure, he's going to work most with the outfielders and the base dealers, and you don't fall into either of those categories, but a chance to soak up and, and talk to a, a Cardinals Hall of Famer, that's got to be pretty cool for all you guys. Yeah, just having his presence in the dugout and the clubhouse, it's, it's awesome. So uh, definitely a great opportunity. I can pick his brain on the running game, and uh, he's awesome. You get any batting tips at all? No? No, not yet. <laughs> now, I, I asked Blake yesterday when, when Chase got the bat the other day over in uh, Quad City. How jealous were you? you have no, I wanted to run on the field. You have no idea. <laughs> I was very jealous. So was Blake. We yeah. were charting together. So was, yeah, that's what he said. We might have messed up the chart. He was so <laughs> just, well, it was only one pitch. It was just a fastball. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, fastball true. For, for a chase, and, and a lot of fun for. I know all you pitchers want to hit. All the all the hitters want to pitch. That's how it works. Pretty much, yes, sir. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, we got a uh, a giveaway for you on Sunday. Oh yeah. That little uh, the little Oyo, the little Rob Kaminsky Oyo, and you've uh, you had your poster a couple weeks ago, and a lot of you guys have gotten that. What, what's that like? I guess the first time you see uh, a giveaway, and, and you're the star instead of it being you know you grew up in the area instead of it being a Derek Jeter giveaway, it's a Rob Kaminsky giveaway. It's crazy. My dad saw that on the screen last night. He's like, "Wow, time flies." So it kind of hits you, and uh, it's it's great ex great experience, great opportunity. And just thank you for that. We'll have to make sure we get you some to. Uh, to send home with that and, and get those to the family. I know you got some of the uh, the posters and uh, and all that as well. So pretty cool for you and a uh, great job last night. Thank pitching, you. Appreciate pitching well, uh, get the win, three to one. And uh, I know you're not going to have anything to do with it tonight, but let's go get another win. I'll be I'll be the biggest cheerleader. You'll so. be the biggest cheer. All right, so you'll be the one down here uh, making the noise and high fiving yeah. the guys when they come home with us. Absolutely. All right, Rob. Thanks. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. Rob Kaminsky, our peak and insurance beyond the expected player of the game from last night, our winning pitcher. Five and two-third innings at uh, four hits, a run, and seven strikeouts yesterday as the Chiefs got the three-to-one win here over at Cedar Rapids. This homestand actually turned into an eight-game homestand as Rob and I were chatting about the game Sunday that he was supposed to start in Quad Cities. That game was rained out. We'll make it up here this Sunday, so it turns this into an eight-game homestand. The Chiefs started off yesterday with a 3-1 win. Game two, obviously, here tonight. Make sure you go up to the concession stands. Enjoy those dollar hot dogs, dollar sodas, and dollar ice cream sandwiches which is presented by Eisenberg on the Wednesdays, Dollar Days, here at Dozer Park. Then tomorrow, it is Duck Dynasty Night and a Thirsty Thursday with dollar draft beers and dollar sodas for the Thirsty Thursday as we play Cedar Rapids. For the final time in Peoria this season, a 7 o'clock start tomorrow. We'll play them at their place up in August, but it'll be the last time they're here this year tomorrow for the 7 o'clock game. Then we welcome in Quad Cities, who we just played up at their place. That's now a five-game series. It's going to start off Friday night with a fireworks show, a 7 o'clock ball game. It's our Faith and Family Night, so Royal Taylor will be here. They'll have a post-game concert after the fireworks as well and a pitch-in for charity tennis ball toss on Thursday and also on Friday with that 7 o'clock start. Then on Saturday, it's our annual Star Wars Night, a 6.30 start against Quad Cities. There'll be fireworks on Saturday as well. And with the Star Wars Night, that means we'll have members of the Midwest Garrison 501st here. And the Chiefs players will be wearing Star Wars jerseys as well. You can get a look at those up on the video board. Yoda featured on those Star Wars jerseys. They'll be auctioned off during the game. And the money raised from those jersey auctions will go to the Children's Hospital of Illinois. Also on Saturday, it's Caterpillar Day here at the ballpark. So they have drawstring backpacks to give away for the first 1,000 fans through the gates on Saturday for the 6.30 start against Quad Cities. Sunday, as we mentioned, is now a doubleheader. It'll start up at 1 o'clock on Sunday, a pair of seven inning games, and it is Bark in the Park. So you can bring your dog to the ball game on Sunday. $2 ticket for the dogs to get through the gates on Sunday. We also have a chance to adopt a dog. You can take a look at all of the uh, different things going on here on the concourse for Bark in the Park, and it's Homer's birthday. Homer will have some friends out here with them to celebrate for Homer's birthday on Sunday. And that guy I just interviewed, Rob Kaminsky, will have the OYO giveaway for the first 1,000 fans on Sunday. And we've got a second giveaway on Sunday as well. It's our player poster giveaway. This one will feature all seven All-Stars. And we had uh, seven of them last week. Ronald Castillo was injured, so didn't go to the All-Star game. But the other six played in the All-Star game at West Michigan. And all seven of them featured on that player poster presented by the Peoria Journal Star. Our regular Sunday stuff still goes on, even though it's a doubleheader at an earlier start at 1 o'clock. So when gates open at noon, you can come down on the field, play catch on the field, and then at 12 
15. We'll have player autographs right here in front of the Chiefs dugout. We'll have uh, kids run the bases after game two of that Sunday doubleheader. Kids 12 and under get a $5 ticket, gets them a free hot dog, free bag of chips, and a free soda as well courtesy of PNC. So that's everything we've got set up throughout this entire weekend. The homestand will finish on Monday, a 7 o'clock start against Quad Cities. That's a half price Monday, which gets you into the uh, berm in the lawn area and also into the seating bowl, both for half price on Monday with the Monday half price ticket deal that will finish the homestand and finish the month of June. We'll head off to a three-game road trip up to King County and be right back here on the 4th of July. Don't forget to get those tickets early for the 4th of July, which is a Friday night this year and we will have a great view of the downtown Methodist red white and boom and the fireworks show over the Illinois River the Unity Point Health Methodist and Proctor red white and boom you have a great view of that here from the ballpark after the game on the 4th of July with the Jesse White tumblers as well so make sure you get those tickets early reserve your seats you probably want to get them over on the third base side and have a great view right there over the river of that fireworks show tonight sit back relax enjoy those ho dollar hot dogs dollar sodas and dollar ice cream sandwiches make a lot of noise help the Chiefs to win their second game in a row in this series against Cedar Rapids we thank you for spending your Wednesday with us here at Dozer Park